Everybody give the Lord a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. I am excited. But not only to preach, but I'm, in a, I'm just excited to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Woo, glory Amen. to God. Amen. Hey, we did have a great time, Pastor Mendenhall. Man, I was excited. You know, I preached so much. I'm glad I got to preach. They, they preached to me, right. finally. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I enjoy ministry. I enjoy the preaching and teaching to my household as well as we give it out most of the time. Yeah. So it was refreshing. Yeah. It was refreshing aim to receive that. Wonderful word in the ministers and wife's retreat. And we appreciate always the men in house, my wife and I. Amen. Our family. We appreciate their, their hospitality, their honesty. It is an honor and a privilege always to be here. One thing I've learned in ministry is what we travel. We never take things for granted. <laughs> we don't. We never take things for granted. We, we, we never just say, uh, okay, it's another Sunday. Let me see what I can do. That's you know, because no, no. when I was young, I used to do that, and then I learned quick. <laughs> you know, you you got to get into the into the before you even become a call. You got to have a, a a prayer life, huh? We 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 like to upgrade our phones, but we don't like to upgrade our prayer lives. You cannot fight full-time demons with a part-time prayer life. Amen. Hallelujah, anyhow. Huh? You can't. You just can't. And I've learned through the years, amen, you know, it takes work and sacrifice and all that kind of good stuff and all that, you know. So, amen. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> well, glory. It's early. I ain't got nowhere to go, but I don't, I guess to eat, I don't, whatever. <laughs> right. I can wait till 4 o'clock to do that. Oh, they're getting scared now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all might as well chill. Y'all might as well just chill. I'm going to get words mixed up like I usually do. I'm going to mispronounce words, so y'all just more, y'all just more relax. Because this is what I do. Right. Oh, hey, Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. Hallelujah. Y'all sit there and be quiet. Y'all going to make me nervous. And then we'll be here till 3 o'clock. Woo, glory to God. Second Kings chapter number 3, beginning with verse number 6. Thank you once again, Sardana Pentecostals. Amen. <clears throat> My wife sends her greetings. I'm, I'm still hoping she'd make this trip up here. <clears throat> we shall see. Amen, but uh, we'll see how things go. Uh-oh, well, I had it. Now I got to download it again, but that's okay. I got it right here. <laughs> Amen. Second Kings chapter 3, verses 6 through 11. But I want to say one other thing before I start to this group of believers today that I wrote down, I guess, during my 21 days up. Daniel's fast this year. I, I just want to pass it along to you. The greatest test of submission is to embrace the leadership God has placed in your life. Hallelujah. Come on now. Huh? That's very true. And King Jeroham went out of Samaria the same time and numbered all Israel. And he went and sent Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled 
<laughs> against me. Will thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And he said, which way shall we go? And they answered. He could have answered a whole different way. But this is where I learned a lot of my lessons. <laughs> this is where I grow. <laughs> the way through the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom, and they fetched a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no more water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord had called these three kings together to, del to deliver them into the hands of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, I'm glad there's somebody in the camp that knows what's going on. Yes. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord? Right. Hmm? Amen. That we may inquire of the Lord by him. And one of the kings of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. I, I, I want to talk to this assembly here and be very frank with you today. Right. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> on, on this subject, and, and I kind of fought with it and fought with it and, and said, well, we're going to go with it. Right. Right. I want to talk to you on this subject, to this, this group of believers right here on the subject, the dawning of a new supernatural season. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Yes. Wow. The dawning yes. of a new supernatural season. Yes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you for Pastor, Sister Mendenhall, Sardana's Pentecostals, the ministry, the leadership, the saints of God, Lord Jesus, the, the, the folks that are visiting here today, God. We want to thank you for your word. Let it go to the force and power and the demonstration. Lord, we thank you for a move of your spirit. We cannot do nothing without you, God. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. And you may be seated. Amen. Now, some of the things I might say might be off the wall. may not have anything to do with the message, but just bear with me, okay? okay. Amen. Uh, this is what, February 25, 6, 24? I don't know. Today's my mom's birthday. 91 years old. Amen. February 24th. It is a known fact that that only 5% of people who make New Year's resolutions make it past Valentine's Day. So it is done past. Right. I like to be honest with everyone in the house today. I might have said it before. But I have kept every one of them both. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> he already knows. I don't ever make them. <laughs> it's just like just, just, bear, just bear with me, huh? Just bear with me. It's just like I have never lost a tic-tac-toe contest. Oh, I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> I never have, really. I never have. You want me to show you? <laughs> I never have. Okay. The chicas and the chicos here will kind of. We'll play afterwards, okay? I'll show you how to, I'll show you how to always win. Because that's the way you defeat the devil. You always win. So we tend to have New Year's resolutions tend to be a prescription. We write for ourselves rather than a promise we devote to God. 
and the three kings uh, you know text here today not to mention all of their armies and animals found themselves uh, in desperate situations they've gone for a number of days seven days without without water and, and you know the dilemma that we face uh, uh, I guess around the world, if uh, if uh, you don't drink the water, eventually you're going to die. Yeah. Because water is a luxury. It's not a luxury. Uh, water is a necessity. Yeah. It's not an extra. Yeah. Huh? And the king of Israel starts blaming God for their dilemma. It was not God's fault. Right. Huh? The king was a bad influence. Right. And sometimes the biggest problem is that we have is our friendship circle. Wrong associations. Come on now. Wrong associations. Wrong associations will kill you. Will kill your passion. Will kill your prayer life. Will kill your walk with God. Will kill your vision will kill your dream, will kill your joy, will kill you. Yes, yes. Amen. Hey. Amen. Oh, help me here today, Lord. And most of all, it will kill your faith. Yes. Don't expect a lukewarm Christian uh -huh. to understand your life of submission to God. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. Hallelujah. Greatest is often determined by what you are willing to walk away from. Uh -huh. Hear me out. Yeah. Greatest and success yeah. is often yeah. determined what you're willing to walk away from. You need to walk away from laziness. You need to walk away from dead peace. You need to walk away from distractions. Come on. We are now entering a new supernatural season of the supernatural power of God. And I'm asking God, Pastor Mendoza, bring it on this year, God. Bring it. Bring it. I need it. I need it. Pour it down on me. I need it. Oh, let's say, woo! Oh. That's my new thing for this year. Woo! Come on, your kiddo say, woo! Come on, y'all like that? Man, y'all being quiet here today? Man, y'all book is loud. Say, woo! You sound like a cow, baby. Woo! Or like the big old moose that I saw at the VS place today. I'm trying to get to, to the car. I said, you better move, Booker. I got to go. And then Luke, come on now. And I'm a you ain't supposed to act like that in church. Well, it's the way it is. Come on now. Woo, man. Woo. Thank you. I look behind this thing here, man. It's like being in a hole. I don't hear. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. Okay. It's going to be all right. You all right? The man like one individual, uh, I guess I petted him too much. Well, you know, not pet. But, you know, just kind of, you know, and, and then after, after what she told me, but I must, we love you, but please be careful with my hubby. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! My God have mercy. Yeah. And I will, sister. I will. I will. Praise God. Come on now. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen in Sudan, don't entertain foolishness. Your time is too precious in this season that you're going to walk in to amen to deal with fools. We come in here and we need to live in a realm of expectancy. I made up my mind every time I come to the house of God. I am in anticipation. I am expecting. I am expecting a supernatural move of God upon me and my family, upon my finances, upon my health, upon our ministry, upon the church that I minister, upon my own church. Come on. I'm going to enter a new body, a new season of a supernatural move of God in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to come in here 
and be in an atmosphere of the supernatural. God, God is saying, and I kind of wrote this down. I've had a lot of stuff done when I'm praying and seeking, seeking God and all that kind of stuff. So, so, so let me just share this with you. God is saying, trust me in the process. He said, trust me in the process. I said, hmm, okay, Lord. Trust you in the process. So that makes me to believe and say, I want to be ready for Jesus. Prepare my heart, prepare my mind, yes. prepare my spirit, yes. prepare my body. Yes. Because if you are not, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not motivated by the words coming out of your mouth, you need to change your vocabulary. Oh, come on now. I was praising, worshiping with the praise team up here a while ago. Pastor Mena, how you and I have been talking and all that. I don't know what you have gone here in the last few months and all that. I, I was just praising and worshiping, and, and then I saw, I closed my eyes and I saw the dark clouds. And God said, that's passing. And then I saw lightning. You can believe what you want to believe, baby. And then I saw behind that the lightning, the lightning that's coming. To this church, yes. which is the power of God. Power Come on, you got to believe it. See, right. you got to believe it. Yes. The day you and I come in this church or any church and we stop believing in the supernatural power of God is the day that you make God a man. Come on now. He's more than a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if it had been for the king, Jehoshaphat, who knew the power of a word from God, then he would have all died in the wilderness. I'm glad, Pastor Menahan, my man of God in my life, amen, whether it be you, my pastor, or anybody else that I travel, all they need to do is sometimes they just send me a, a text. And I might be going through a crazy season. Uh, with my family, and my, we might be going through a crazy time. But just one text, one phone call, one word from yeah. God can change everything. Huh? He didn't know. He didn't know my situation. He didn't know what I was facing. He didn't know my dilemma. But thank God for a man of God that you got here that is in tune with God. You can receive it as a blessing. If you don't, then you'll be accursed. Hallelujah. Woo! I feel, I, I, I feel so many. Oh, Lord. I ain't got to preach it, but I'm trying to preach it in just a little bit. Just hold on. Hold on. That tells me you and I need to surround ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Amen. With people who will walk a mile or two. To hear a word from God. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Come on, because they know one word from God can change your world. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Let me give you some cliches that we've gotten used to. Uh -huh. but, but ladies and gents and young people, if we can ever grasp it, then we won't look at those cliches again. I'm ready for my next breakthrough. I'm coming in here and we're going to have high church. I'm coming in here, and I'm going to believe God. Really? Huh? I'm coming in here, and let me see. I'm coming here, and it's quote, unquote, I want to have quote, unquote, don't get me wrong, good church. I got in trouble for this, but I know that, I know that statement. But I'm past that. And I don't know anything about y'all. I know y'all. I'm past that. I mean, that's great. But if that's all we're going to have, then we're going to be just like the rest of the denominal world. 
when we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when we speak in tongues, when we're baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we got the operation of the gifts of the Spirit, we got the whole package. It is more than, than okay. It's more than good. It's more than great. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. Because, because I am crazy enough to believe that at any moment, anybody can walk over these streets and come into Tordano Pentecostals with in the wheelchair or a cane or with cancer or whatever it is. And we've got to have the gift of faith in operation. That's supernatural. And if they walk down here, we go, oh, wow. Really? My God, that's supposed to be normal. But we say, wow, really? Yes, ma'am. It's supposed to be the normal, Bishop. Hallelujah. So people get mad at me when I say, what? Did you see that? Did you see what happened over here? Did you see what happened over there? Yeah, I said, praise God. Weren't you excited? Yeah. Wow. I said, but that's supposed to be normal. Huh? Come on now. Come on. See, there's somebody in this house today that's going to take action on the word. That's going to break the drought and shift you into an abundance and overflowing, shifting into a new supernatural season, a new turnaround, a new breakthrough. Uh, got to get to a level. From time to time, watch this. I'm tired of people telling me I hate seasons. I don't. I don't. I'm tired of being in the valley. I don't. I look at all this congregation here today. And not everybody here today is in the same season. In fact, not everybody here today, whether I'm preaching or whether the pastor preaches, is going to receive the same word in the, word in the same way because it's going to be meaningful to different individuals. And it's going to minister to different individuals. So in my season, this is what I come up with. You and I have to embrace. Yeah. And help me here, Lord. You and I have to embrace the season that we're in because God never wastes seasons. Hallelujah. When you learn that principle, uh-huh. when you learn that, you're going to go into every valley. You're going to go to every season. Amen. Whether you're high, mid, or low, and you say, okay, God, here's the problem. I want a new level. Use me, Lord. I'm tired of it. New prayer life. New praise. New worship. New level. And then the, ah! the devil hits you. And then you go run into pastor of the first lady. <laughs> well, turkey bun, you asked for it. What did you say? I asked the Lord for a new season. I asked the Lord for a new level. Well, there it is. So you and I have to embrace it. Or you know what's going to happen? We're going to fall and we're going to go around and around in the circle again. I'm not preaching anything new. Press your hand, preachers. I'm Bible shot talk. I'm just coming and confirming the word that this church and Savannah Pentecostals have been preaching for months. Yes, that's the word. God, folks. Amen. You have to be, you have to learn how to be stretched. Yes. Don't get offended. No, no. Don't get discouraged. No. Suck it up, baby. They're a part of the process. Yes. Huh? Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen in the house, you got to get your mind going in a new direction. Because dwelling on negative thoughts will keep you from becoming all God has for you. Okay, how many times have you heard that statement? It's cliche. Well, they're okay. How, what have we done about it? <laughs> huh? What have we done about that statement? Huh? Come on now. Growth is a matter of the heart. If your heart is not right, folks, there will be no growth. 
<sighs> he said, make this valley full of ditches. Ain't that exactly the word you want to hear? When you're in the middle of a desert, you mean you're dying and you're freaking out. And that's not what I want to hear when I'm going through my dry season, Pastor. Come on now. Huh? Especially when the ground is hard, dry. Here there are folks in a dry place, uh, in the wilderness, in a low place. And in this place, this low, dry, desert place, the word of the Lord says, Start digging. Yep. Start digging. It was hard, slow, difficult work. When I was growing up, when I first graduated from high school, only job because I had no experience, I was a laborer at a, at a plant, and I was a laborer, and so I dug ditches, you know. And they worked my boonies off. Man, it was hard work. Yeah. Amen. Hey, but from there, I learned how to go up. If I want to go up, I got to work hard. Yes. If I want God to elevate me, I got to pray. Yes. I got to fast. Right. I got to be faithful to the house of God. Yes. I got to be faithful in my giving. We got people that are coming to the church that, that, that this, is, this is how they think. Just because you're in church today, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't mean you're going to heaven. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's the truth. That's the truth. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm no, to that's the truth. Come on now. Come on now. If all you're here for today is just because, whoo, that was great, Bob, man, that Bob, boy, he preached another great, and he did. But if you didn't move on that word, when you know, he might not know, but most of the time he knows. When you know that the word moved on your heart and conviction fell, it's not his fault. It's not Sardana Pentecostal's fault. It's your fault, big shot. It's my fault. Yes. My fault. Yes. Huh? Yes. Come on now. Yes. I'm talking to people right now who maybe been in that same place. Low, dry, hard, difficult. It takes a, a great amount of effort. Mm -hmm. huh? and, and sometimes, what was it? And I, I know a lot of us use some spiritual dry. No, I just like to pray a little bit fast and try to do the best I can. Right. But I keep moving forward. Right. I keep moving forward. Right. Sometimes you got to force yourself to come to church. Yeah. <laughs> Others that are supposed to be in church this morning, probably still gaming. Oh, I'm sorry. We have become a bunch of social media junkies. Yes. Well, don't go there, I ain't going to go there. I'm giving you a little commercial here. We have. We have. I guarantee you. What's the... Just cool your jets. I travel. I see some of the same folks over and over again. Yeah. If I was to try to pry their phone, I would see a phone print. <laughs> hmm? Now, we got to help me with this statement, Lord. Okay. Now, this doesn't apply to you. Blow it off. We've come to the point where pastor preaches his heart out and the ministers that come. Sunday school teachers teach. And 60 seconds after the altar when he says dismiss. Or well, Lamas did nothing wrong. Church is over. I agree, but watch this. Can you not give it a few minutes to right. download everything you just heard? Sorry. Can you give it a few more minutes? Can you wait about a half hour? And, and the only one that I can see that have to have the phones is, is right here because they have people calling them all the time. It could be an emergency. Somebody could be picked up, la, 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 blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And I said it all the time. But for the rest of us, mm -hmm. huh? Can, anyone, can we not wait 10 or 15 minutes after the service and see? Whoo, let me, oh, wow. Yeah, that's it. Nothing wrong with you going, I'm not saying that. But here's the problem. We get in here, we go, okay. That was, whew, whew, that was good before we get to the seat. Oh, I got five messages on Messenger on Facebook. Whew, ooh, social media is calling me. And that's fine. 
But for the next 30 to 45 minutes to an hour, we get into this thing. What have we done? We have just lost a whole total of what happened in our service past year. And then we say, what a pastor preach. Uh, uh, my God, we're so wrapped up in social media. We forgot what Bishop uh, 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 preached to us. What was the scripture he used? Uh, uh, hey, but you know everything about the doggone phone, you turkey. <laughs> Nothing wrong, but everything has its proper use, ladies and gentlemen. And then we walk away. Well, God didn't do anything for me. Well, God didn't do that. Well, God, ah, la, 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 blah, blah. oh, be quiet. I could have used another word, but I'm not. Oh, I forgot this going live, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 they're watching. This should be a song called. They're watching you, they're watching you, <clears throat> watching you. Do, do. So a bunch of crazy songs on that, watching you. Well, yeah, not only that, but they're watching you from up there. <laughs> they're watching us, Brother Ben, all. Come on, get some apostolic truth, you boogers. Come on, get the Holy Ghost. You need it. That's what I say, sis. Come on now. Hallelujah. We force ourselves to come to church and, and, and sometimes we feel so dirty and empty and our mind is saying, man, this is ridiculous. It's not worth it. No, that's the enemy telling you not to come. Right. The, the, the enemy is telling you over and over, oh, man, it's dead. It ain't going to happen. All those prophecies and dreams and so on and so forth ain't going to come to pass. You ain't going to launch that ministry or that job or the business. That devil is a liar. Somebody needs to make up their mind and so down now, right now, that it's going to come to pass. I know, ladies and gentlemen, when it's all says hard. I know it's all teaching Bible studies. I know it's pray, praying is hard. I know fasting is, is tough on the body. Oh, and while I'm at it, while I'm at on the fasting bit, we have made fasting a food issue and not a spiritual or heart issue. Mm -hmm. I never seen so many people, oh man, I'm going to really lose 10 or 15. Daniel's fighter. I said, is that all you're going to do? And I have asked the Lord every year, Lord, I don't care about losing weight. And he's honored my request. Because when I finished over, I'm two, three pounds heavier. I really am. He has honored my request. I said, and then I remember, Lamas, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> be careful what you ask for. Huh? Huh? Come on now. I know it is, ladies and gentlemen, but you may have to keep digging, okay? 50 doors, 50 Bible studies. Where they at? Well, do another 10. Two out of 10 could be coming. Come on now. Celebrate the progress that you're making in this church. Hmm. The, be the best defense against the enemy is to be so God-centered that we give no place to the devil. Come on now. Do not stop loving God. Watch this because this is the latest scripture for people not coming back to church or coming back to an altar. Do not, watch this. Do not stop loving God because someone who claimed to represent God misrepresented him. Who are you coming to serve anyhow? Huh? What do you do when you're going through the fire? You keep walking. Huh? What do you do you, when you're going through the Red Sea? You keep going through it. Huh? Come on now. What do you do when you're in the valley of the shadow of death? You keep walking. What do you don't realize in that low, dry place, you know, when your muscles are aching and, and you're tired and, and you're all bummed out and freaked out, that's okay, ladies and gentlemen. And what you don't realize is that you're building a landing strip for God's blessings in your life. Come on now. I know this is not anything you hear today. Nothing you under the sun. <laughs> you are the one who determines how deep and wide yeah. is his provisions, his glory, yeah. his anointing yeah. in your life. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 Woo, he got it.
You were created. You were created for a greater capacity to receive glory. A greater power. A greater anointing church than you've ever had in your life. Come on now. Come on now. And if you get tired in this journey this year, let me give you some advice. If you get tired in this journey, learn to rest, but don't you dare quit. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. I got to do it too. That's I preach so much, brother. I got. To, I mean, why we? I mean, we, we, we got to chill. Yeah. Let's go take a few days break. Yeah. Learn to rest, yeah. but don't quit. Amen. Come on. Amen. I can see, and I can feel hurt. But I don't have to live hurt. That's right. huh? That's it's right. my church to live, to, live, to, to live as a victim or a victor, right? That's right. Huh? So I'm going to walk in victory every single day. Amen. Come on. There's people that have prayed. I'm going to tell you something. And since y'all took over in Sardana here, I'm going to give you a statement here. Since you took over in Sardana here and you're doing the will of God and you're, you're trying your best to win souls and this and that and everything else. Watch this. There's people within this whole arena area that have prayed for their downfall. They have prayed for your downfall, but they're about to go get their refund. <laughs> ah, y'all should have boogie on them. You should go, woo-hoo, yippee, woo Am I the only one that's excited about, let him get talking about Bishop here. I'm going to take it easy on, on the coon cat clean. That's my buddy, mama. I'm going to take it easy. Huh? I mean, they've been crazy on Monday. Oh, yeah. Let them get crazy. Tell them, go get your refund at the box office because we, we, we about to get sold out. <laughs> Come on, give me the hug. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Glory. You got one more bottle to go. No, come on. Come on. Come on now. Right. 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 There's a lot of people that pray for our downfall. Right. Right. Then they keep praying. Yeah. You called. I'm called. Yep. You're not afraid to go anywhere. I'm not afraid to go anywhere in the whole, in the whole district. Hmm? They look at us here, Pastor Man, huh? all nice and fuzzy and scuzzy. And, you know, we nice handsome cats, you know. We'll be a little older, but we, we nice have some cats. And folks out there, they don't know what kind of p- price we paid. They don't, right. they don't know. They don't know what kind of price that you wonderful folk in this assembly have paid to have what you have Amen. today. That's it. Right. Let them keep rapping. Let them keep talking. Mm-hmm. Let them keep trying to damn and condemn. Yeah. They, don't, they don't have any earthly idea. No. But you know where you're going. You know what your vision is. <laughs> you know what your dream is. I'm talking about the dawning of a new supernatural season. Following up on Sardana, Pentecostals. It's coming. Get ready. It's coming. Get ready. It's coming. Get ready. Yeah, I ain't going to finish, but that's all right. <sighs> you cannot talk defeat. And expect victory, folks. Come on now. Sometimes you need to burn the bridges behind you so you can keep from crossing them again. Come on now. See, before you sin, the devil lies. After you sin, the devil condemns you. Huh? I ain't got time to go on my prayer life vacation because the devil never takes a vacation. Huh? Come on. Come on. Don't carry your mistakes with you. Use them as stepping stones. Come on now. God is stretching us here today. He's molding us and preparing us, ladies and gentlemen, to go beyond measure. Oh, it doesn't feel good at the moment, but you got to know that it will be worth it. Yes. 
when you're going through is preparing you for something greater. The season is going to give birth to the promise of God. God has for you. Why? Because you were created to excel. Hallelujah. That's, there's no limit to how high we can go in life. And this church keeps stretching to the next level. Job said in Job 14, he, he said, For there is a hope of a tree. It if it can be cut down, then it will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Then he said in verse 8, uh, 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 through, the, through the root thereof wax all in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground. And then finally in verse 9 he says, Yet through the scent of the water here in this, this thing here, it will bud, it will bring forth, it will bring bros, uh, bros like a plant. I heard that, wow. I heard that. You can feel it. It's like the wind. You can feel it, but you can't see it. Come on now. You can feel it. And I can feel the shifting going on. Come on now. I can see the, the shifting. I can smell water, life, joy, restoration, deliverance, a new level of anointing. Come on now. No wonder the devil has fought us so hard. No wonder he's trying to take you in the wilderness. He knew if he ever got to the water, he wouldn't have a chance if you got to the water. Ah. Mm. A lot of times he thought I was going to fall apart. Yeah. Through the flood, I told you about last year, two years ago. Came to Houston, Hurricane, Hurricane Harvey. I kept preaching. I kept sowing. I kept giving. He thought he had us. <laughs> he thought you would get all angry and bitter and resentful and critical. He thought you would just sit down and cry. Ah! <coughs> Wrong. Wrong. Why did God send the water? Not just because, ladies and gentlemen, we were thirsty. It wasn't just because we were dry. And it wasn't because you or I were in trouble. God loves you. And he wants to... Ooh, God loves you and he wants to meet your needs. But he has bigger, uh, bigger things in his sight. God just doesn't want us uh, to have our need met and rescue us and deliver us. He wants you and I to be so filled yes. up and so fired up yes. and so powered up that you and I will stand up and make the devil sorry that he ever bothered you. Yes. God said, I'm going to give him water, quench your thirst, come meet your need, go on to deliver you. But that's just the beginning. <laughs> I, wish I, had, I, I don't have time for all this. 2 Kings 3, 18 and 19, you can read it later and all that. But, but it's all about your season. You're not going to die in the desert. It's your season. Huh? We must humble ourselves and pray if we ever wish to see true change. God needs to see in us. Many people give up in the wilderness and miss the promise, realizing that the season was actually for that for a reason. Like I said a while ago, you embrace this. God does never waste seasons. Be ruthless with yourself. Huh? Any weak point will allow all habits to take over and steer, steer you off course. Huh? Come on now. How determined are you? Determined, de how determined are you determines your outcome. Deciding is freedom. Indecision is torture. 
<laughs> you ever thought about that thing, man? I have brother, brother, man, man, I'm, to- I'm tortured, you know. Yeah or no? Yeah or no? This, or that. man, it's torture. Huh? Loneliness will play with your mind more than anything else. You can't be married to the will of God, folks, and be creeping with the devil. Because God ain't no part-time love. Don't stretch over people in your past. There's a reason why they didn't make it into your future or into your moment. Huh? Talking to him. No, no. We're going. Can't, can't mention that. We don't want to lie. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Watch this. See, I'm, I'm all messed up, man. I see all kinds of stuff here. Ah! Woo! Why do I want to mess up my praise or my worship for somebody that don't like me? Why? I, you know, you're cool and you're cool, but I came for God. You're nice. You got 10,000 kids, but you're, but I didn't come for that. God's nice. God is nice. I came for him. Oh, I'm glad that I got pastor, first lady. I got the believers. I got prayer warriors. I got seasoned people. Amen. That if I need something from God, ain't no doubt about it. They can lay hands on me, Bishop. You can lay hands. Man, and I'm going to get deliverance. I'm going to get healing. I'm going to get breakthrough. I'm going to get encouragement. Come on now. Hallelujah. So I said, why? why would I want to mess up my prayer for somebody that don't care anything about me? Huh? Come on now. Hell trembles when a door closes and you dance anyway. That's it. I can dance great, man. I can dance great. I can dance great. Preaching at one time in a church and some of these cats didn't move. Went outside and started playing music and all that, and they moved. I said, You sorry turkeys. You didn't move in church. You didn't even live a pinky. I know you want a Twinkie. But, oh, I'm sorry. But they moved out there and didn't move in here. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just radical, man. You know? Because. If I can't dance, and I'm not preaching, if I can't give an amen or a hallelujah when Pastor Menenhaw is preaching, then I don't have no right to ask you to come. Hey, say hey, amen to me. Hey, glory, glory, hallelujah. Right. If I can't right. say it to my own pastor, right. Right. come on now. Right. Come on now. Right. That's the greatest man of God you got in your life. Amen. Not Lamas or any other visiting minister. We just had another break to the wall. There they are right there. Pastor First. There they are right there. Pastor First Lady. There's your blessing. Yes. 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 If you can't help me, do me a favor. Please don't hinder me. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Woo! Woo! I figured out after 45 years of living for God, because I was crying every test that came my way, brother. But I mean, I was a whiner for, for a little while. Not no more. I was a whiner. But I found out every test should become your next great testimony. Every test should be your next great testimony. Well, it wasn't pretty, but you know, I came out. And guess what, Pastor? I need to testify before the congregation. Look what the Lord has done. What happened? You broke into a new supernatural season in your life. Have a few, I have a few more minutes? Uh, I, I want to be, you know, I'm going to give you folks a break. Not me. I don't get tired. I don't get tired. I feel, Pastor Tim all the time, Lamas, 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 Lamas. I hate to preach you so much. I said, preach it. You know what the problem is? You people get tired. I don't. <laughs> no, really. I mean, I get tired when I go to bed. I 
was up at 3.34 o'clock this morning. I could not wait to get to sit down at Pentecost. Really, sister? I, I, was, just, I, mean, I was excited. Man, I was excited. I, 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 I had my alarm set for about 5, 5.30. I said, ooh, hallelujah. I beat my alarm set. Time to pray. That's what I did first thing. First thing I say, okay, 10 minutes. First thing I say when I get up, first thing, very first thing I say is, Lord, forgive Lamas of my sins. What you do? Well, probably nothing. But I want to make sure. Right. See, that's the problem when we come to an altar. Uh -huh. What does sis do? Oh, man, she, she, must, she must be bad, 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 bad. What did, what did cat do? He must have been bad, bad. We're never going to get over that stuff. Right. That I'm here because I need God. Right. That's it. That's right. First thing That's I do it. when my, you can tell my wife. First thing I do when I first hit the ground, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Yeah, right. That's the very first, that this is for me. First thing I say, and then I lay this hand on my head, Pastor, and I say, Lord, I pray over my mind, my heart, excuse me, my body, and my spirit in Jesus' name. Third thing I do, so I'm going down to my study, and my daughter made a nice sign in the new study that I have after the flood. She put on there, and I read it every morning when I go down. In the morning when I rise, yeah. give me Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. So I cannot go in my study without seeing that sign. Right. And then I quote the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And, and, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. We know words to popular gospel songs. We can't quote the Lord's Prayer. Amen. I affected it to be silent. We know words to a lot of songs, but we can't even quote the Lord's Prayer. And, and, and then I go in, into my praising God for a while. Before I even, you know, before I even bug him, okay? I tell him, thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord, thank you. You're awesome. Forever, oh Lord, I quote scripture. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your word has revived me and given me life. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Yeah. <sighs> because in order to pray the word, you have to know the word. Right. Why? Because you have to use ammunition against the enemy. That's you may not always get a hold of pastor or first lady. So you need some ammunition for yourself. Uh -huh. So you got to quote scripture as you're praying. Yes. Come on now. That's Come on now. Amen. Be mindful. Be mindful of who you allow. <clears throat> Be mindful of who, of, of who you allow to come into your life. Don't try to reopen doors that God has already told you to close. Come on now. I do believe with all of my heart as I stand before this group of believers today, this church, whatever spiritual condition you're in, I don't know. That God is sending this church to use you as a wrecking ball against wickedness and darkness. Yes. Woo, my God. Yes. God's going to use your life to penetrate fortified places where Satan has set up his territory. God is sending you in as a weapon of mass destruction. Transformation, ladies and gentlemen, that comes when we make room for the Holy Ghost to fill us. Yes. <sighs> Empower us. Set us free. Not because we're deserving of his help, but because he loves us. <sighs> You're not worthless, my God. <laughs> you were worth the blood of Jesus. Huh? Why? 
Because when I repent all over again, it brings a refreshing into my life. Yes. Amen. Some of you are here today. Who, Jesus, help me tonight. You're standing on the edge of a supernatural new season. I'm going I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell some people something here today. Don't be afraid to pray for the impossible. Don't be afraid. Some of y'all have, have, have had giftings and, and you're still afraid to use it. Some of y'all have had other giftings. You've let the enemy play with your mind. Oh, I know it's getting quiet. I expected it to. But I'm telling you, folks, I'll come today because I feel the dawning. No, no, you say, Lama, you're going to have 200 people. I don't know. But this is not what this message is all about. When I say the dawning of a new supernatural season, of course, it has to start with us. And if the Lord then floods us with a whole bunch of that's new right. believers and all that, that's going to be up to y'all. And then we can, re- then we, we can receive that through the Bible studies, home Bible studies, uh, outreach, or ho- however y'all, y'all do things here. But for me, a new, a dawning of a new, a new season is what I've been praying for. Okay, if you've been praying for it, then let's don't be afraid anymore. Huh? I'm not saying that all of you are, but I'm just saying maybe, you know, maybe if you're here today. Huh? Sometimes, sometimes tears Or the only thing you have to offer him. Pook. But don't despair. Don't despair. Because they are the water that you need for your next season of breakthrough. And it brings, woo, hila basha, Lord, thank you. And it brings refreshing into your life. And when that happens, all of a sudden, as I close, We wake up once again. Oh, knowing where we're at, knowing what we're doing, knowing what we've done, but that spiritual refreshing renewing wakes us up once again and says, oh, okay, okay. Wow. So I hear in my spirit, and you hear <clears throat> in your spirit, and I didn't get to the whole thing, but just forgive me, the abundance of rain coming into my life. Spiritual breakthrough, spiritual downpour, spiritual renewing in our walk with God. You call Sardana Pentecostals for a purpose. Cliche. Okay, that's cliche. Now, grab it. Again. This current calamity, if that's what some of you are going through, is not and will not be for your destruction, but merely a powerful, powerful, powerful platform to bring Woo! Greater glory to God! Greater glory to God! Why? Because as we stand all over the house, there's glory in the house. Why? Because in just a few moments, you and I are going to come step out by faith 
and your praise today as we close your praise is going to start creating an atmosphere for the power and glory of God come on why because when our praise meets his presence anointing is released do you hear what I said when our praise meets his presence anointing is released the glory comes who comes down I'm, I don't know about you I'm ready I'm ready so down the Pentecostals I'm ready I'm ready Lord I'm ready for such a time as this that's another cliche okay well then if it's such a time as this then I gotta take advantage of it now because all I'm doing sis is I'm living in the moment in a moment so you know what I think I spoke to you the last time or previous time but you know what now your mind has expanded your under your understanding has expanded Even your vision has expanded. Your another moment has come. I came here today saying, you know what? I I kind of sometimes remember who I pray for in every church that I go to. I don't always remember. I say, Lord, please, Lord. Let, let me just go. So don't you think that I'm picking on you? Okay? Uh, I, you know, not only in this church here, but churches that I travel, you know, me and my wife. Sometimes my wife does it, sometimes I do it. I try hard not to go to sometimes the same people, brother, man, hard. That's not, that's my, my agenda today. And I wasn't even thinking about that till this moment. I'll pray for you. I want to pray for you. 